Alright. I hope everybody's having a good night. This is a first for me. We shall see how this goes. I really don't have high expectations. <laughs> but anyway, my name is Joe. If you don't know who I am already, and it's my first time trying to even attempt a YouTube video. So, let me start by saying a little something about myself. As you could say, I'm an aspiring comic book artist, graphic designer, father, all of the above. Anyway, I thought doing something like this would be fun. I have to get rid of the squeaky chair. And interesting. So, what I'm going to do today, as we try to find our feet in this, I guess, or I try to find my feet in this, home and territory, is I'm going to talk about a couple of my pieces and showcase a couple of other local artists, try and promote them a little bit as well. I think that's kind of what I would like to do. Talk about how I feel about their work, how I feel working with some of them. You know, the normal stuff that all of us go through. The insecurities, of how we feel when we do stuff as well. So, anyway, let me jump in and start with this first piece. I've always loved I've always felt a peace doing art. It calmed me, relaxed me, gave me something to focus on. Lighting, perspective, shading, uh, rendering, whatever you want to call it. It's just, it captures you, it makes you focus. At least for me, it does anyway. It doesn't have my mind running around in 800 million different directions or trying to chase 20 different children. Yeah, but this piece was fun. I really like doing stuff like this because the way this is different than comic book art is you're not focused on panel to panel. You're just doing something with raw feel and emotion. I didn't really have a direction for this when I started. Uh, kind of has a fantasy, she's got kind of the elf ears and the hair I'm really not a big fan of, but we all nitpick our own work. It definitely, the more I look at it, definitely has a H.R. Geiger kind of feel in the background, the textures in the pipes, steampunk, the lighting and the clock, and the way that it seems like the dress is just melting off. For, I had originally wanted to do that dress orange, but it came out kind of like a really earthy tone and kind of didn't really separate from the background. The color theory just wasn't working, so I had to adjust it. And maybe I'll take this image and pull up the whole digital file and go through it, break down by break down to how I did it. And We'll see how that goes. Who knows what the other next videos are going to be about. I, I'd really like to do other people's work to help get their stuff out there more. But at the same time, it's hard to do that without permission. And some of these guys' work that I'll be showing, I know personally, and I hope they don't mind. If they do, please tell me. Because you guys know I'll, I'll take it down in a heartbeat. All right? But anyway, back to this one. This was fun. It really is. I think it's a fun piece. It's light, even though the background was kind of dark and dingy. It, you get this feeling of a, a lost fairy almost, without the wings. Definitely got to get prints of this one. If you enjoyed that one, let me know what you think, because. I'm actually really self-conscious about my work. 
fully but I'm not. <clears throat> this is definitely definitely one of my strongest pieces I think. Anyway, let's uh let's try and go to somebody else's stuff, shall we? This next piece we got was potential by a friend of mine I've known for God. Oh, we're 2022 now. I met Justin Ayers back in 1993. So almost 30 years. This piece isn't nowhere near that old, but yeah. the funny thing about Justin, I always loved art as a kid. It wasn't until I met Justin then I started to really appreciate comic book art. I had collected comic books, but when I saw him sketching one time, we had PE, I was just like, I was, like, I was amazed. His style really has developed. It's always had that same personality, that same bubbly, cartoony feel. The Justin's very distinguished. He, it's always had a lot of energy. I think that's one thing about Justin. Anybody that's seen his work says it's 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 full of life and energy. Some of the stuff he's doing right now to procreate is pinnacle him. I don't see I mean yeah, we always get better, but that's probably gotta be the best stuff he's putting out or has ever put out is the stuff he's doing now. If you haven't seen his work, I'll tag him if you'll allow it. But Justin Ayers, he's it, it's, his work's just fun. It's a reflective of his personality too. I, mean, I'm, I know there's an other side to him, but his artwork is definitely definitely fun if you like that feeling. Let's see who else have we got here. Ah, yeah. The pencils to this, I think I realized I picked this one. It was done by the late great Free. Free was one of those examples of a guy that would work you into the ground. He just One of those great, great people that come around in once in a lifetime. You know, this was fun. This was my inks over his pencils. And we didn't really get a chance to work a whole lot together. I think there was one time we were, we did a couple of pages and then nothing ended up coming up with the project. I don't know why. I don't ever really, didn't really ask him. Yeah. And these things happen all the time. You know, and you just gotta learn to let it go and move on to the next thing and keep pushing. And maybe it was me, maybe it was just it wasn't working out financially, who knows? It doesn't really matter anymore. I still wish he was with us, but it is what it is. Anyway. And by the way, these were all inked digitally. Um, so I know a lot of people not digital work, but it's just a tool. It really is. Once you learn how to use the tool, it should make a difference. Here we have Killian Cubstead. This was done. I I did these inks a long, long time ago. I think this was when I was really first starting to get the hang of how digital was done. A lot of these lines are really stiff, especially up in here. It, it, they almost, they don't seem alive or textured. It just seems, just kind of flat holding lines really. And it's not really killing his feel. If you know his pencils and you know his work, he's got a lot of textures. This stuff is very organic. And I think in a lot of ways, I 
flattened it out with solid holding lines and you know just stable cross hatching that just didn't didn't bring the rendering out. It was just I love the man. I love working with him. I just don't I don't know if it was one of those things that it just didn't work. But anyway. Maybe we'll focus on more of his work too sometime. That'll be fun. And then well, here we have Victor Moya. Who did these inks? I think with the contour lines, I need a little bit of freedom and expression. If you're familiar with Victor's work, you know he uses solid gold lines. It does it with brush and it's just, it's immaculate. His holding lines are just perfect every time. And I don't even think I could emulate that with digital if I wanted to, so I didn't even try. But I went with more of a thin feel on the cross hatching lines because that's just how he is. If, if you're not familiar with him, look his work up. Victor Moya. It, it's beautiful work. Very beautiful work. Always has been. Probably the, singularly the guy that got me into really wanting to do inks. <laughs> Believe it or not. Justin got me into the comic book work when I saw him draw. And Vic was probably the one responsible, most responsible for me wanting to do inks. But with the shading, the, just the tones, I don't even think I did this justice, to tell you the truth. I don't even know if he's done an ink version of this. If he has, please let me know. I need to see it. Because I, I almost feel bad, you know. But anyway, this is the kind of stuff that I really want to do. I want to go over other people's work, even if I don't do the inks on it myself or have some kind of involvement with the work itself. On top of that, I'd like to maybe give some tips to people that aren't familiar with how to set things up digitally. Adjust your brushes, adjust, you know, your pens, work with different types of layers, you know. I, going back to this image here, there's a lot of overlay, a lot of the settings are set on the overlay. Um, there's a couple glow dots layers in there to make that shine. I think that's one reason why I'd like to take this piece and just break it down. It might give somebody that one tip to be like, how did they get that effect? Or how would you get this effect? I think that's kind of what I want to do. I really enjoy teaching as well. My, my daughter loves to sit here at the Semtech. She'll take it over sometimes. <sighs> yeah. She already knows all the shortcut buttons and everything. Not bad for five years old. <laughs> but maybe somebody's missing that one thing that they see in my work that they want. How'd you do that? How'd you get that effect? I, I would love to do a couple of videos on just stuff like that. Going on how the different layers work. You know, playing with it. You, you really gotta play with it. And blend it. It's fun. You can't be scared of it. And that's the other thing is people are, you know, for the longest time. That's that's one reason why I like digital. Is you can sit there and you can play with all these different things from watercolors to oils to pastels. You can experiment with the blending methods, the layer methods, to get the effects that you want. As where you try and do this stuff traditionally, you're still learning the same techniques, but it's not costing you an arm and a leg. Maybe for the startup to get the 
programs or the Syntec, the Red Computer, whatever. There are free programs out there. We could probably go over some of those. I'd like to try and mess around with some of those. Maybe I'll do a whole thing on Inkscape, which is a free version of Adobe's Illustrator program. That'll be fun. But anyway, and I really want to promote a bunch of other local artists. I know there's a few guys I left off of here. You know, like I said, we got Justin, who's a big influence as far as my direction. I want to do comics. Free. To None that can be said about him yet. If you know him or you ever met him, you'd never forget him. Killian, his work ethic. I don't think the man sleeps. The textures, the. Uh, he brings a lot of energy to some of the images too. I, I really don't think this, my inks or this style of making, did him justice, except maybe down in here with the gargoyle and the water running off. That's probably my favorite part. And Victor, same thing. Not enough can be said about the man. There's other people. I left you off this one. Don't worry. I, I plan on doing more of these. I think it's going to help. It'll help everybody. If every little push helps. Word of mouth is probably the greatest thing for people like me or people like these guys that are wanting to work. I mean, you can be the greatest artist in the world. No one's ever heard your name. No one's ever going to hire you. We spent years on our gifts, you know, and if you want to call it a gift. Our craft, and some of us are still learning. I mean, yeah, I play with a million different things, from photography to penciling to... Maybe I'm not a comic book artist. I don't know yet, and I'm 43. So, <laughs> this should be fun. This is something different. This is something kind of scary for me. And we're going to take it one video at a time. And I want to see how this camera really works. And hopefully, you enjoyed this. I don't. Hopefully it brings you in some, some kind of insight to some of these people that you may not know or you might want to check out, see something you really, really liked and you want to check out their work. Let me know. I'll put all the list of the names with their permission up. I'll, I'll tag them. I'll whatever they need to be, you know, for you to see their work. You know, one guy I left off of here, it was another workhorse, James Stone. He, the man doesn't stop at all. He, he'll run me in the ground <laughs> and keep going. So, but this first video is probably going to be a disaster. So bear with me. And let me know how I can improve it. What do you guys think? Uh, you know, those of you that know me, know my areas, what do you think I can do to make this better for everybody else? You know, Gene, hit me with your workshop. I can take it. <laughs> but thanks again, and I'll get to posting this really soon, and people will either enjoy it or it'll go up in flames, and I'll be on to the next thing. <laughs> Thank you.